Hero Wanted by Melinda Curtis Chapter 1 I've been invited to my ex-husband's wedding. A week before the wedding, no less. Leah Martin consolidated bouquets of daffodils in her Sea Glass Bay market stall and considered her options regarding the unexpected invitation. Eat a cookie and bring a hot date. Leah glanced at Marisol, her booth companion, and tugged on the waist ties of her work apron. Did I say that out loud? You did. Marisol, the middle-aged dynamo, waved a cellophane-wrapped, green-frosted seahorse cookie until she caught the attention of a passing family. Her auburn hair was pulled back in a neat bun that showed every smile line on her cheerful face. You often say what you're thinking. You probably also talk in your sleep. Not that anyone is next to me to hear at night. Leah sighed, glancing around the booth set up on the sidewalk, and then the porch in front of her flower shop. Both needed sweeping. She breathed in the soft scent of roses and tried to channel the peace of a rose garden. Marisol made a sale of the daffodil bouquet and gave the two kids each a cookie. I can hear you. And while we have a lull, I wanted to thank you for letting me cook in your flower shop kitchen. You're good company. Leah meant it. When Marisol had wandered into the flower girl shop several weeks ago, she'd struck up a long conversation. And because Marisol was new to town, and Leah ran the small-town florist shop all by herself, they drifted to the back room where Leah could work on some bouquets that had been ordered and watch her four-year-old son Owen play in his corner of the shop. And then, before Leah realized what was happening, Marisol was making cookies in the store's small kitchenette and charming both Leah and Owen. The upbeat widow had been coming back to make cookies every day since. I wish my sons agreed with you. Marisol arranged the last of her cookies in a basket. She used those cookies as an excuse to strike up conversation. They insisted I move here after Paolo died, and yet they don't want to spend any time with me. Those four boys. They don't want me cramping their style in their kitchen or with the ladies. Her four sons ran Tank's Bar and Grill, which was located on the other side of the alley behind the flower girl. It was a popular hangout with singles, be they locals or tourists. Marisol harumphed. Those boys need to settle down and give me some grandbabies. Those boys were in their thirties and enjoying the bachelor life too much to think about settling down. Everyone in town knew it. Everyone except Marisol. Leah sold a few more bouquets. Meanwhile, Marisol delighted her customers with free cookies. The bell in town square began to ring, signaling the close of Sea Glass Bay's market in the historic district and the start of happy hour at many local restaurants. You're welcome to use my little kitchen anytime you want Marisol. Leah began folding tables and transferring flowers from outside to the refrigerated case inside the flower girl. Around them, other vendors were doing the same. Soon, the street would reopen to traffic. Soon, Leah would join three of her closest friends for a glass of wine at the tipsy table. Maybe her friends could tell her what to do about that wedding invite. I saved cookies for Owen and his friend Lindy. Think about finding that hot date. Marisol set two orange starfish cookies on the table. And then she carried her basket of cookies out to the street, approaching the smattering of remining shoppers. See you tomorrow. A few minutes and a few last-minute sales later, and Leah had locked up the flower girl and was heading toward the artsy classes and creations booth to pick up Owen. The hands-on craft booth for kids was run by her friend Claire Bishop, who had a seemingly endless supply of energy when it came to kids. There were only two kids left in the booth, her Owen and Lindy, the later belonging to another hard-working parent, Claire's boyfriend, Sully Vaughn. Both kids wore full-length craft aprons and happy smiles. Leah carried three daffodil and daisy bouquets. She set one on a table for Claire. What a busy day. You're not kidding. Claire was cleaning Owen's hands and face with a wet, wipe. Her strawberry blonde hair lifted in the light ocean breeze. She smiled when she saw Leah. We just finished finger painting. Mommy I made a rainbow for you. Owen grinned. 
There was green paint streaked through his dark blonde hair and a smudge of red that Claire had missed on his cheek. His apron looked as if he'd wiped his paint-covered hands on it at some point. All the colors had blended into a murky black. And tomorrow we're gonna make sparkle flowers. Glitter on paper cups with pipe cleaner stems. Claire informed Leah. I'm sure the glue monster will make an appearance. She raised her hands on either side of her face and curled her fingers in and out like flexing claws. Who likes the glue monster? Oh oh. Me. Lindy's little hand shot up. And me. Owens followed. Is the glue monster single? Leah teased. Maybe I can take him to Charlie's wedding. Mommy the glue monster is our sticky hands. Owen mimicked Claire's finger curls. And then he ran to one of her supply tubs. I'll show you. No, not today. Claire laughed, cutting Owen off at the pass. We're closing up and cleaning up now, remember? Owen nodded, hand caressing the plastic tub as if he couldn't quite let go of the idea of the glue monster. I helped clean up, Lindy said brightly, hovering near Claire, who she adored. She was two years older than Owen and a big help with the little ones, according to Claire, who'd only recently begun dating Lindy's father. It's always good to have helpers. Leah gave Owen and Lindy their starfish cookies, in response to which they hooped. These are for after dinner. That statement dulled their excitement somewhat. Can I have my rainbow picture Miss Claire? Owen pointed to where a colorful finger painting was hanging on the drying board. I want to give it to Mommy. Sure. Claire went to unclip it. Just be careful. It's not quite dry. And neither, it seemed, was Owen's craft apron. While watching Claire, he'd ran his hands up and down his apron front, and now his hands were paint-stained once more. Hey, buddy. Charlie approached the booth. He wore black khakis, a black polo, a disapproving frown, and his fiancée's manicured hand possessively on his arm. Why don't you give your rainbow picture to Mommy Ashley? A small voice inside Leah cried out in protest. I love rainbows. Ashley smiled. Her lipstick was perfect. It hadn't been chewed off after a long day of work. Her bright yellow dress hung perfectly over her slender Pilates instructor frame. She had a pedicure and a manicure and a man. None of which Leah had time for. And if she was being honest with herself, she didn't begrudge her Charlie either. He'd never been happy to let Leah shine. Owen frowned at his father. I don't want Mommy Ashley to have my rainbow. Mommy puts my pictures on the refrigerator. Mommy Ashley puts them in the trash. Leah stifled a laugh and thought, I owe that boy an ice cream. Charlie frowned. Oh, baby bear. Ashley looked aghast, running forward in her impractical heels and her too short yellow dress, bending her knees to embrace Owen, who was still wearing his stained crafting apron. Before Leah or Claire could warn her, Ashley had swept Owen into her arms and stood. I adore rainbows. And I adore you. Oh, Leah and Claire said at the same time spotting the damage to Ashley's dress before she did. Dark handprints on her shoulders and a black stain to her bodice. Ashley glanced down and gasped, practically dropping Owen to the ground, which was the wrong move to make since it caused a black paint streak from her ribcage to her hem. My dress. Mommy Ashley, you look like a bee. Owen smiled, and then made a buzzing sound. While Ashley assessed the damage and Charlie made sympathetic noises, Claire and Leah burst into action. Claire wiped Owen's hands clean again. And then Leah carefully removed his apron, stuffing it into a plastic bag Claire gave her. Mommy Ashley is a pretty bee. Owen buzzed some more. This is Italian silk, Ashley whispered mournfully, staring down at her ruined dress. It's okay, babe. I'll get you a new dress. Charlie frowned at Leah. Come along Owen. Oh. Leah glanced down at her little one. I thought you were picking him up at six tonight at my place. Ashley wanted to pick Owen up early to try on his tuxedo for the wedding and then we're having dinner with the caterer, 
Charlie said in that superior tone of his. You should be able to keep him clean, you know, Leah wanted to say, he's a boy. But that sounded sexist. She considered saying, dirt has a way of finding him. But that seemed inappropriate. Instead, Leah smiled and took Owen's hand, giving it a squeeze. Good explorers show it at the end of the day, don't they buddy? It was what she told him every night when he shed his smudged and stained clothing. Yup. Owen beamed up at her. Explorers don't get dirty sticking flowers in water for their mother's hobby, Charlie muttered. But crafty explorers do, Claire said staunchly. Who's doing the flowers for your wedding? A professional we found elsewhere. Charlie smirked. Leah, do you have a date for the wedding? Ashley had snuck up behind Leah, the same way she'd snuck up on her ex-husband during their marriage, quietly and with her cleavage on display. I need to let the caterer know the final headcount. Uh. Of course, Leah has a date. Claire jumped into Leah's rescue, despite Leah not having dated in the two years since her divorce. He's hot. Is he on fire? Owen asked, wide-eyed. Mommy shouldn't touch him if he's hot. Somehow, I don't think your mom's at risk of being burned, Charlie said in a haughty voice. And Leah wanted to slug him. She'd been raised with three brothers, who taught her to fight her own battles. But her mother had always counseled her to use her words instead of her fists. And with Charlie, Leah found it hard to jab back in any way. Why did he have to be such a jerk? Wasn't it enough that he'd lied when he'd promised to love her forever? Did he have to take every opportunity to make her feel small? Oh, Leah's date is hot. Claire kept on championing Leah's cause. And Leah's touching him. Wait until you see them together. They sizzle. Claire licked her finger and then touched her hip with it, making a sizzling noise. Charlie and Ashley turned their gazes toward Leah. Leah's cheeks were heating. She should have told them that Claire was joking. But they stared at her as if the idea of Leah dating a hot guy was impossible. Ashley even rested her hand on one hip, as if she were incredulous. And suddenly, Leah wasn't embarrassed. She was mad. How dare they think she wasn't woman enough to date a hot guy? He's smoking hot. Oh my god. What is wrong with me? I'll be careful not to get burned Owen, Leah added quickly before her son could express his concern. She collected the rest of his artwork from his bin beneath the back table and then his rainbow painting from Claire. You guys probably need to leave if Ashley's going to change. Otherwise, you won't keep to your schedule. And Ashley loved her schedules. She's right, Ashley said, holding her dress away from her. I saw a cute little dress in the window of Splendiferous. Let's just run in there and see if they have it in my size. All right, baby. Charlie lifted Owen into his arms, and then the couple walked off without so much as a goodbye. By honey. Leah called after Owen, waving. By mommy. Owen tilted his body away from Charlie, waving both hands. I don't know how you can be so nice to them. Claire commenced packing up her art supplies with the help of Lindy, who was softly singing a song about a bumblebee while stacking yarn skeins in a plastic tub. I have to be nice for Owen's sake. But that didn't mean their snobbery didn't hurt. I shouldn't have told them I had a hot date. Oh, yes, you should have. Claire snapped a lid on a storage bin. They only gave you an invitation last week. And only because Owen is the ring bearer, and they want you to keep him out of trouble so they can pretend to be the perfect couple on their perfect day. Well, there is that. Leah folded an easel. But I want Owen to have a good time. You deserve a good time too. You need a hot date, Claire said in low tones, in case little Lindy was paying more attention to their conversation than the sorting of yarn skeins. Can you find me someone hot enough to impress Ashley but who's not my type? Leah's cheeks were heating again. I'm too busy for romance. I know someone hot. Claire waggled her brows suggestively. Someone sure to make Ashley respect you and Charlie to see you with new eyes. Hey. Ladies. Sully, Lindy's father, 
arrived with a large wagon to load Claire's craft supplies. He was a hard-working member of the community, wiry and handsome, and quick with an encouraging word. Dad. Lindy practically flew into Sully's arms and began telling him about her day. He's a gem, Leo whispered. Isn't he, though? Claire whispered back with a private smile. I have a gem in mind for you, too. I'm going to have this hot guy meet you at Rigatoni's tonight at six. I'll tell him you'll be carrying a daisy. She plucked one out of the bouquet Leah had brought her and handed it to Leah. Who recoiled. I don't do blind dates. Nobody in Sea Glass Bay should. The town is too small. And everyone knew everyone else, if not personally then at least by reputation. This blind date scheme could be worse than showing up at Charlie and Ashley's wedding solo. Claire Tsked. When you say you don't do blind dates, I hear that you haven't done blind dates. Time to try something new. No. Please, no. Leah broke down one of Claire's folding tables. The least you can do is let me ask. Claire helped Leah carry the table to Sully's wagon. Go on to the tipsy table without me. I don't know what you two are cooking up, Sully said, giving them a dazzling smile while holding Lindy, but it worries me. Don't worry about us. Claire had a winning smile of her own for her man. When we're done packing up, I need to run a quick errand before meeting you at the tipsy table. Am I really going to let her set me up on a blind date? The alternative was to go to Charlie's wedding dateless. So yes. Yes, she was. Didn't stop her from experiencing a moment of panic. Leah grabbed Claire's arm. Don't tell anyone about this, not even Jazzy and Paige. I'd die of embarrassment. And be sure to tell this guy that I'm gorgeous, smart, and funny, Claire finished for her, because you are. Do you think so? Leah laughed. Suddenly, I want to date you. The tipsy table had the advantage over other bars and restaurants of having outdoor seating that overlooked a small playground, which worked great when Leah had Owen with her. Though they usually gathered there on Sundays for their weekly wine and wine session, Paige and Claire had cornered Leah in her booth at the start of the day, convincing her that they should go clothes shopping instead as their market wind down treat for the week. They knew she was dragging her feet on picking an outfit for a wedding she didn't want to go to, let alone dress for so they'd moved their wine get together up one night. Leah sat down at a table with Paige and Jazzy and explained that Claire was going to be late. The daffodil bouquets she brought for her friends lay in the table center, trying to be cheerful. Leah wasn't sure if Claire could pull off a blind date in such a short time frame, but if she did, Leah was going to have to run home and change out of her jeans and purple flower girl t-shirt. We waited to order until you showed up. Jazzy rocked an adorable little baby in her arms. Jeremiah can't make it today. Her significant other. Her new significant other. We know how picky you are about your wine, Paige added, drinking water and watching Sully push Lindy on a swing. They planned to join the group later when Claire arrived. Paige pushed a lock of short auburn hair behind her ear. You say that like picky is a bad thing. Leah tried not to be offended. At least I'm not high maintenance like Mommy Ashley, she air quoted. They all groaned as if pained, which reminded Leah, Jazzy, how is your stomach? Pesky parasite gone now? Jazzy grimaced a little, readjusting Caleb in her arms. Yes, the antibiotics are doing their thing, thankfully. Claire leaned forward in her seat, concern showing. Should you even be here? It's only been a few days since the hospital and we would have understood if. Jazzy waved her off. This is the only time I've been out since I got home, and it will only be for an hour or so. Besides, I bailed on our wine and wine session last week to have dinner with Lauren. She beamed. And then there is Jeremiah, he has been absolutely amazing, looking after Caleb while I recovered. It helps to have a hot guy around. Although, I have to admit, I'm not bouncing back as quickly as I would have, like, say, in my twenties. Why does it feel like guys stay in their prime, smoking hot, long after women do? 
it's the price of having babies. Or mothering everyone around us. It ages us. We were all hot in our prime, Leah said with a low chuckle, reaching forward to stroke the black hair on Caleb's head. We're on fire now, Paige said unconvincingly, making Jazzy and Leah laugh. Hey, we are. Or at least, Jazzy and Claire are. They have men. She sighed. Give over that baby Jazzy, before I talk myself into the pathetic zone. Jazzy transferred Caleb to Paige's arms. Staring at the baby made Leah long for another child. She'd come from a large family and had always assumed she'd have several children of her own. Can we just agree that we're well-aged, Leah suggested, smiling warmly at her friends, despite being unable to forget Claire was setting up a blind date for her this very minute. The intimidation factor of a date with a hot man was making her palms clammy. We're aged like fine wine. Speaking of which, it's time to order. Let's order Claire her Syrah. I'm going to have a white wine blend. She waved to their waiter as a bee flew past. Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot. You won't believe what happened to Ashley this afternoon.